for lack of a better title, I decided I was just going to call this thing the uh, uh, Creed of the Aspie, or the Aspie's Creed. Now, these are things that I personally have decided that I'm going to live by. You can you can accept them yourself if you want to. You can apply them yourself, or you can say, I don't think so. But number one is this. The world is not responsible for me. Now, what I mean is simply that. Fact of the matter is, I've got autism. Maybe you do too. I assume you do if you're watching this video. I have Asperger's syndrome. Now, the world... That is to say, the neurotypical world is not responsible for taking care of me. I've got to admit that fact. Okay, well, who is responsible for me then? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. But the flip side of this is, nor am I responsible for the neurotypical world. I can't change the way people think. I can try. You know, I can support efforts to... Uh, um, Educate people, efforts to get other people to understand, you know, what, what uh, autism is all about and Asperger's syndrome is all about. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, there's a lot of conditions. I mean, there are thousands of uh, mental and physiological conditions that people need to be aware of. Autism is just one of many, one of thousands. So it's okay to make people aware of these things, but I'm not going to wait till all 8 billion people are on the same page before I start uh, moving forward in life. You got to keep in mind, guys, you know, I'm 70 years old, almost 70 years old. And over these decades, I've learned a thing or two, and I found early on in life, if I'm going to wait for people, if I'm going to wait for the neurotypical people to support me, that um, I've got a long wait. I mean, I've really got a long wait because they're not going to do it. The fact of the matter is most people, most neurotypicals don't even know what autism is, let alone Asperger's syndrome. In fact, I think most autistic people, a lot of people with Asperger's syndrome, don't even know what it is. I mean, I was probably, I don't know, my 40s or 50s before I really understood what, you know, I've heard the term before, but what I really understood autism was or what Asperger's syndrome was. All right, number two of the Aspie's Creed is, flip side, is I am responsible for myself. Again, nobody else. So how am I going to survive in life? I got to admit, you know, I got to admit that it's not as easy as it would be if I were not autistic. I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot harder because, as you know, neurotypical people, I call them space aliens because they seem to have these invisible, invisible antennas that allow them to, uh, to uh, not literally, but uh, figuratively speaking, to read other people's minds. Uh, it's, called, um, it's called theory of mind, where you, you just kind of have this intuition of what other people are thinking. You get feedback from facial expressions, from body language, and whatever. Well, I don't have that, but that doesn't mean that I'm not responsible. You know, a lot of people have deficits in their lives of one kind uh, or another and that's just happened this just happens to be the one that i have i'm not going to make excuses i mean sometimes i can get away with it but why would i do that i don't want to make excuses i want to move forward best i can i realize I hate to use the term handicap but i realize that you got this deficit we'll use that term you know i'm not going to deny that at all i got it it's there it's very real but I'm still going to be the adult in the room, the room being my life. I'm not going to expect anyone else to be responsible for me. That takes us to number three. I accept my immutable traits. Now, the word immutable, as you probably know, just simply means unchanging. If you are autistic, you will always be autistic. Based upon the research that I have done, and I've done a lot of reading on this, I've done a lot of studying on this, I can't find anybody who says that you can be cured from autism, that you can, at some point in time, not have Asperger's syndrome. Once you got it, you always have it, and as far as I'm concerned, you're born with it. It seems to be it's prenatal. Something that uh, you come out of the womb with, and well, here I am, world, this is the way I am. So I've got to accept the fact that this is the way I am, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend I don't have these traits, but I'm not going to pretend that these are particularly faults that are weighing me down. I mean, come on, admit it. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but the fact of the matter is there are a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of people in this world. 
And then uh, generations past and in generations future, there are a lot of people in this world right now have got things a whole lot worse than I do. So my creed is I'm just going to accept myself for what I am and I'm going to move forward the best I possibly can. Now, number four is this. I will make adjustments and improvements. Now, just because my traits are immutable doesn't mean I can't uh, improve, obviously. I mean, the older you get, you're supposed to get better, right? You're supposed to learn new skills. Everybody can learn new skills. Well, some of the skills that I am learning, and I hope you're doing this if you have Asperger's syndrome, is I'm learning to communicate the best I can with these space aliens, you know, that, that are surrounding us. I mean, these people with the invisible antennas that can do, um, that can do mind reading, that have intuition. I need to somehow communicate with these people best I can. And I don't think I'm ever going to get this language down perfect because I just can't. It's kind of like, I like to use the analogy of somebody who is born blind, you know. And that's what it is, mind blindness. Somebody who's born blind, they learn to adapt the best they can to the world, to the seeing world. Doesn't mean they're going to have sight ever. Maybe they will someday. Not true of people with Asperger's syndrome. We're never going to have, we're never going to get rid of mind blindness. What would you call that? Mind to sight? We're not going to have it. It's just not going to happen. But what we can do, like people who are physically blind learn to adapt to the world, we can constantly be learning to adapt to the world as we find it. So part of my creed is that I will make adjustments and improvements the best that I possibly can. That takes us then to number five, and that is I will not hold grudges. This requires some explanation because when somebody is abusive, Say somebody like uh, a covert narcissist where they're, they're born that way. I mean, it's just the way they are, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to excuse them. I mean, when someone has um, flawed personality traits that hurt other people, I'm not going to pretend that they're not that way and say, well, I don't want to hold a grudge. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I mean, once I see who somebody is and that people is nefarious, that person is nefarious, that person is harmful not only to me, but to others. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to say, well, you know, I don't want to hold a grudge against this person. No, that's a bad person. This is a person that has some serious character flaws. And uh, I am going to hold them accountable for their actions. So when I say that I'm not going to hold grudges, I'm not holding grudges. I'm just accepting reality. I'm accepting the, the, the reality that this person or these people are bad people. They just are. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Now, if they don't want me to hold a grudge, I don't even like that phrase. Well, cool. They can change. And if they don't change, um, I'm not going to pretend they did change. So people call that holding a grudge. I call it being realistic. Do you agree with me on that? You know, guys, I know that's uh, that could be a little bit controversial, but okay, if you disagree with me, well, that's why we have a comment section, so you can let me know what you think. Number six is I will not use my autism as an excuse. Very easy for a person with autism, with Asperger's syndrome, to uh, say, well, you know, I can't help but this is the way I am. Sometimes that's true. Oh, well, a lot of times that's true. When I think back over my seven years, some of the dumb things I've done, uh, I mean, they're really stupid. Uh, things that I've said to people, things that I've, I've done that hurt people, didn't mean to. And uh, things that people have done to me that have hurt me because of my autism, took advantage of me, uh, all that is reality. I'm not going to dismiss that, not at all. But by the same token, I'm not going to say, well, you know, I've got these deficits, uh, this uh, ability to have intuition, mind blindness. Um, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Now, if it's, if it's a genu um, genuine problem, okay, acknowledge it. Nothing wrong with that. But to use it as an excuse when you really don't need to, just to get away with something or to get something 
or to get your way or to manipulate other people. No, my creed is, and I hope this is your creed as well, I will not use my autism as an excuse. You see those two rectangles on the screen? If you like what you see, click one of those rectangles and we'll just keep our conversation going. But if not, thanks for stopping by and we'll talk to you all next time.